Hey, what's up? It's Vani Hudson with securityplusPro.com and welcome to my YouTube channel if you're watching this on YouTube or my blog, securityplusPro.com forward slash blog. And here today, I'm going to show you how to install the Kali Linux penetration testing distribution system on your host machine. So in the last video, I showed you how to install VMware Workstation Pro. It's the, the premier type 2 hypervisor out there. If you don't know what any of this stuff means, go to my blog and uh, read the article I have on uh, hypervisors and virtualization. But the whole purpose of this, by the way, is just so that we can build out a lab and we can learn and truly get some hands-on experience so that the topics that we read about make sense, you know, that we can actually feel it. We can, you know, click, we can click that button that says attack and it hacks our systems. You know, that's what we want. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux and then how to verify that your version of Kali Linux isn't infected with malware. Uh, this is a little bonus I want to throw in there. Um, a lot of times what happens is um, hackers will attack websites and then they'll replace downloads with trojanized versions. In other words, they'll inject malware into, for example, an ISO or a .exe file. And then when an unsuspected user downloads it and installs it, they get infected. How do you know if the version you've downloaded has been implanted with malware? Of course, you could try to scan it, but that's not a sure shot method. I'm going to show you how to use Windows PowerShell to do that. Um, and then I'm going to show you how to set up Kali Linux. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually install Kali Linux, and then we're going to set it up and make it perfect um, for you when you're doing your tests. But in this video, I just want to show you how to grab it. Okay, so we're going to go to Kali Linux, not Kali Linux, Kali.org. Do not go to KaliLinux.org. I don't know what that is, but the official site is Kali.org. And we're going to go up to download and we're going to say download Kali Linux. So you notice there's two versions. There's a 64-bit version and a 32-bit version. I always get the 32-bit version because I find that Linux applications run better on a 32-bit version. And it's a lot better when you're learning how to reverse engineer malware. If you decide to go into the malware analysis side of information security, it's great to have the 32-bit version because the address space isn't as large as 64 bits, and therefore it's easier when you're trying to look at different you know, API calls and different uh, hooks and process injection and all that stuff. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the 32-bit version. Don't worry, by the way, if all that stuff I just said doesn't make any sense. You're gonna learn all this stuff, okay? It's not that complicated. I've been doing this for a long time. That's why it's kind of you know, easier for me. So grab the 32-bit version from HTTP, you see it's 29, uh, 2.9 gigabytes. And um, like I said, I've already downloaded this, so we don't need to do this right now. But the thing I wanna show you here is this, the SHA-256 SUM. This is a message digest. Essentially what happened is the people that are sort of managing the Kali Linux distribution ran the entire ISO, the entire 2.9 gigabyte file through a SHA-256 hashing algorithm and produced this 256-bit hex-encoded message digest. After I download Kali Linux, I want to make sure that my version hasn't been corrupted, it hasn't been tampered with, it hasn't uh, been changed in some way, and that's why we want to look at this. So I'm going to right-click this checksum, click Copy, and the idea is I want to make sure that it, my downloaded copy matches the version that's on the website. I'm going to open up Windows PowerShell by holding down the Windows key X and typing, uh, going to Windows PowerShell, Awesome. Now I am going to then go to my folder that contains all of my um, downloads for this. I believe it's in post eight. Oh, I think it's in blog and then post eight. I'm just hitting tab by the way to get through this. Okay, so now if I look inside here, you can see, here we go. We've got Kali Linux here, right? So we want to make sure that we have the right version. In other words, that the hashes match. So I'm going to use this thing um, called git file hash. So GCM is a alias for git command, and I'm just going to look for all the commandlets that have the word hash in it. This isn't a PowerShell course, so I'm not going to teach you details about that. If you guys want me to do a PowerShell course, I will, but you know, we're not going to go into detail about that, okay? So we've got git file hash, so I'm going to use git file hash, tab complete that. And what do I want? I want the path, which is my version of Kali. And I want to use the algorithm that is SHA-256. Enter. Now, this could take some time to complete. Remember, it's running the hashing algorithm on the ISO. This is a 2.9 gigabyte file. 
And I just want to make sure that the hash that I get here is the same as the one that I've got on the website. That way I know nothing has changed. There's been, if, even if there's a slight change, a micro change, it will completely change the hash. This is a very good way of, of, of determining if it hasn't changed. And by the way, if you want to learn more about hashing, go to my blog. I have a whole article on that. Um, you know, the links, you should see the links uh, in the, the comments if you're looking at this on YouTube or just go to my blog and you'll find it there. So now we've got the hash. We want to make sure it's the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up Notepad. I'm going to paste in the version I got from the, the website. And then I'm going to select that, right click, which copies it to the clipboard and compare them. And you can see here, they are exact. They both end in EEFC. That's a quick way to check. Look at the last four characters and the, the first four characters. So we know that we are dealing with a legit copy. We are safe, okay? So I just wanted to show you that cool trick. So now once you have Kali Linux downloaded, we launch VMware Workstation. And I'm gonna show you how to get this thing uh, ready inside of here. So let me go ahead and minimize these browser windows. I'm gonna say create new virtual machine. And let's go ahead and give it the path to our virtual machine, which I think is in here. Yes. So put that on the clipboard. I'm going to say typical installation. We're going to go to installer disk file, which is the ISO. I'm going to paste in the path to the ISO. Oops. Let's go ahead and browse to it. Post eight. There we go. So now we've got the path to the ISO image. This is just like putting a CD in your computer, basically. Linux, Debian 8.x. Click Next. I'm going to name mine Kali 2 32-bit. I'm naming it 2 because this is the second version of Kali Linux. There was a 1.0. This is the 2.0, the latest copy as of the recording of this. Click Next. 20 gigs is great. I'm going to change it to store virtual disk as a single file. You get a huge performance increase. And trust me. When you're running VMs, you want to make sure you get the maximum performance out of them because it, it can be kind of slow if you don't have a beefy host machine. The host is the physical machine that's hosting your guest VM, by the way. And by the way, if you want to learn all about virtualization, you can go back to my blog and I've got posts on that, securityplusprocom forward slash blog. Sorry, I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but really, if you want to learn about this, that's the place you want to go. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and click next and I'm going to click finish. Now, what I like to do is you can see here the memory, the processes, the hard disks, everything here, right? If you find something here that you don't like, what you can do is just basically click it, double click it, and then go in here and I want to change the memory to 1024. I want one gig of RAM. This is using physical RAM, by the way. So I want one gig of physical RAM. I click OK. That way I just adjusted it on the fly. The other thing I like to do, oops, is I like to scroll down here and I like to add a little description. So I'll say Kali Linux 2.0 32-bit uh, for security plus uh, testing, uh, uh, hacking lab, whatever. Okay. And then what you'll do is you'll say power on this virtual machine and it will indeed power on. So we can go down to graphical install and we can start to set it up. So I'm not going to do that in this video. In the next video lesson, 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 in the next video lesson, <laughs> We're going to go through the graphical install and I'm going to walk you through that process. And then in the next video after that, I'm going to show you how to uh, customize your version of Kali Linux. And then in the next video, after those two videos, I'm going to show you how you can get Windows 10 Enterprise Edition for free and how to set that up. And then our lab will be in a working state and then we'll look through some commands that you can type. I'm giving you a lot up front. I'm sorry. I just love this stuff. And uh, so anyway, make sure you subscribe if you're watching this on my YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. I love that. Thumb the video up, like it, leave comments. And if you're looking at it on my blog, securityplusprocom make sure you, you know, scroll down and enter your email address. That way I can send you awesome videos like this, tips, brain dumps, PDFs, you know, audio files, anything you need that I think will help you pass this test. Okay. So you're doing a great job if you made this far so far. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. All right. I will see you in the next video.